Hello there everyone and welcome back to Radiant Moon Tarot. My name is Victoria. Today we are talking about the new moon solar eclipse in the sign of Libra. This is happening on the 2nd of October of 2024 and this will be an a eclipse happening at 10 degrees of Libra. So it does have an association with Capricorn and we do have some Saturn aspects here as well with this uh, with this eclipse. We'll talk about those. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the overall eclipse collective energy for this eclipse and then we will pull cards for your individual sign make sure that you do watch your sun moon and rising signs it's going to be important to get the big picture but i'll put timestamps down below and i will be posting this video in both the long form with all the signs um timestamp down below and i will also be posting it just cut up individually just for yours um so if uh, you want to just see everything all in one place i'll put the link to the big uh, big long video down below sometimes the shorter ones just helps you find it a little bit better. So October 2nd, 1149 a.m. Pacific time, adjust your uh, adjust your calendar, adjust your clock um, for whatever time this is going to hit your personal time zone. And this is the 10th degree of Libra. So it does have associations with Capricorn energy. And we do right now have Pluto in Capricorn. So we'll talk about that one in a minute. This um, Libra and eclipse is the last one we're going to have until 2033. Of course, we're going to have other eclipses but not in Libra. So this is a very important um, eclipse to wrap things up, and which is a little bit contradictory because new moon eclipses, solar eclipses, are about new beginnings, a fresh start, making moves, right? Um, but this one does have a link to the past. It's a south node eclipse. It has a link to um, our past lives, but also it's karmic. Um, it also has um, links to past eclipses, uh, especially the Libra eclipse, the solar eclipse that we had in the fall of 2023. So exactly a year ago, this can be where there's been something going on internally or externally, especially with relationships, um, where something has been playing out over the course of a year. And you might be making a very, very important decision at this time. Do we fix? Do we heal something? Do I want to move forward with this? Do I want this to blossom and grow? Or am I done? Right? Some of you could be having breakups and shakeups at this time. Um, and it can come about what seems to some people like being, uh, like quite suddenly. But for you, it might not actually be quite sudden. It may have been brewing for some time. So look back to the solar eclipse in Libra we had last year uh, at this time and see what was going on. What have you been doing for the last year and what is wrapping up now? Uh, or, of course, what are you breaking away from? Eclipses, of course, do bring... Um, do bring sudden changes, they do bring surprises, they bring faded events, they bring the unexpected, and they can certainly bring endings and beginnings. And of course, we're in eclipse season. We've had our lunar eclipse already, September 17th. I'll put that video down below as well in case you haven't seen it. Um, but that was in Pisces, and it was very intense, very emotional. Um, and you're probably still feeling the, uh, the energy, the after effects of that, right? And eclipse energy does last for about six months or so, can sometimes last a little bit longer if it's a bigger theme in your life. And sometimes things can last a little bit shorter, just depends what you've got going on. But this solar eclipse is like a new moon on steroids. So it is very strong, very powerful energy. Um, so we do want to think about what we are leaving behind or what we're willing to change or what has to change so that we can restore balance and harmony in our lives. This eclipse does bring about Libran themes. And of course, the Libra is ruled by Venus. So love and romance and the things that make us feel good. Um, Venus energy brings us new beginnings. It can bring uh, blossoming abundance in our lives. And it can also be where we do take pleasure in in things right but Libra energy is relationship based and we so this is a eclipse where you're going to be looking at all the relationships in your life the relationship you have with yourself with your pets with your family with your friends with your romantic partners and also relationships from your past eclipses can bring things out of the woodwork and they can bring things from your past so you could have a friend pop in out of the blue 
Um, I've had three <laughs> that pe people that I haven't seen since I haven't seen or talked to since I was probably about like 13 years old, a very long time ago. And all of a sudden they're popping up out of the woodwork. I'm like, Hey, how's it going? Right. So, um, you know, so it, it's very interesting what can, you know, what can come back into your life. Now, of course, yes, it can also bring about old romantic partners and things like that as well. But of course it can sometimes be a second chance because maybe you missed an opportunity previously or the time timing wasn't right or something. It can also be if someone's coming back in your life that maybe it's for that final closure that you need so you can finally break free once and for all and move forward and get on with your life, right? But it can bring second chances, right? So we can have some interesting things going on. Um, so, uh, expect the unexpected when we've got eclipses, but change and transformation is the order of the day. Um, this eclipse is going to be conjunct Mercury. So very communicative energy, um, very talkative energy. You might have a lot of big ideas going on. October 1st, so the day before we have this eclipse, we have a Mercury Kazemi. And a Kazemi is when the planet is so close to the sun, it's like in the heart of the sun. But what this does is it brings us information. We can have downloads coming in, like spiritual downloads coming in. We can have a revelation. We can have some information. You might stumble across some key piece of information that's like, whoa, mind-blowing. Uh, someone might reveal something to you, right? Uh, you could, again, have like a huge idea that, oh my goodness, why didn't I think about this before? So something there can certainly go on October 1st, October 2nd. So something, uh, something quite interesting for a lot of people or maybe it's just a key piece of information that you need to make an important decision in your life but certainly some spiritual energy that's going on there as well we do have to very quickly touch on the retrogrades that are happening around this eclipse a very important all right we do have october 5th Mars enters shadow period. So it's preparing to go retrograde. It's not full retrograde until December 6th. But when Mars goes into shadow, um, you know, this is bringing in retrograde energy. So October 5th, if you are an Aries, okay, this is going to very much impact you. Mars is your chart ruler. Um, so you might find that you are slowing down a little bit. You might find that you're reflecting on things a little bit more. You may find that you have a little bit more uh, control over situations rather than being impulsive and fiery. So it could be like kind of a very tempering energy there for you um, for that. But Mars will be in retrograde fully December 6th up to February 23rd. Keep an eye on February 2025. It's going to be a big deal. Okay. Same thing with going into next eclipse season in the spring. There's going to be a lot of things that are connected to this eclipse. So you could have some recurring themes. You could have some things that come up multiple times. And you could, of course, have more than one opportunity, right? But you could be hitting some milestones here also. So it's very interesting energy that we've got going on. But February 2025 is going to be very interesting. And when Mars is retrograde, it starts in Leo and finishes in the sign of Cancer. Um, so it does do like kind of a little bit of a traveling effect there. Um, but there could be something that starts and something that ends, or it could be something that maybe you put on hold and then you pick it back up again. October 9th, we have Jupiter going retrograde. All right. And Jupiter will be retrograde until February 4th. So if you are ruled by Jupiter, so Sagittarius and Pisces, because Jupiter is your traditional ruler, um, you might be feeling these effects more than other people. We are going to, we're all going to feel it, but you guys are going to feel a little bit more. And so, um, right up until February 4th, you might feel that instead of expanding, you're restricting. You might feel that something that is kind of, um, you know, been moving forward quite steadily, kind of all of a sudden slows down a little bit. And it's not a bad thing. It's just it could be a pause for a reason, like a pause for the cause. Um, it could be that maybe it's so that you can pay more attention to detail with something, right? Um, it could be that, you know, you know, quite often when the universe slows us down a little bit, um, is to protect us from something, right? So, you know, take the retrograde time and the slowdown in some energy um to use it to your advantage october 11th pluto goes direct 
All right. And Pluto is retrograde right now in the sign of Capricorn. Um, it's at the anoretic degree, 29th degree, now or never, you know, you might be feeling some pressure to get something done. So Pluto has been retrograde for a while. We've been in reflection. A lot of Pluto brings, uh, goes down into the underworld, goes to the shadow and brings things, something to the light. So there could be some revelations coming in. There could be some big ideas that can also be where you've been reflecting on something for quite a while and now you're taking your power back, right? So Pluto brings change, transformations, endings, new beginnings, um, brings an evolutionary kind of energy, brings secrets to light. What is hidden is revealed. And it also focuses on, of course, wealth and power. So October 11th is when you might be supercharged to take some sort of action. So it's, it, it's again, a little bit of contradictory energy because usually when we've got these big retrogrades, it is slowing us down. But because Pluto is direct, this is a big deal. It's the last time it's ever going to be in Capricorn, right? In November, it goes back to Aquarius where it'll stay for 20 years. And so this can be, um, you know, a time when instead of we're being calm and reflective, we're bursting forward and bursting free. So big breakthrough kind of moment for us all. So we've got a lot of contradictory energy going on. So, you know, stay grounded, find your balance, right? Libra, um, you know, it's going to be important to connect with nature, Venus right can uh, go outside um you know just try and find a little bit of space each day just for yourself right so that we can navigate this energy that we've got going on crazy things going on in the skies um but we will get through it but very important time um collectively and individually of change and transformation in our lives so we're now going to pull some cards for uh, each individual sign. Your sign is linked down below. Uh, if you do enjoy my content, do enjoy the video, please do quickly give it a like there. I truly appreciate that. It does help my video get seen and it lets me know that you um, resonate with the readings as well. So check out your timestamps. Um, if this is your shorter form version, then we're just going to get right into your sign right now. Thank you guys for watching. Hello there Aquarius and welcome to your solar eclipse in Libra reading. So you may be expanding your mind at this eclipse. Uh, this is your ninth house ruled by Jupiter and Sagittarius energy and this is all about your higher mind, uh, your big ideas, your philosophy on life. And some of you could very much be reflecting um, on the last year, on the last 20 years, and how far have I come? What have I done? What do I still want to accomplish? What have I learned? Ninth house, learning energy, right? So some of you could really be recognizing how much wisdom and experience that you have gained. And this is a great um, it, it's an it's a great sense of empowerment for your future. Right. Sometimes we just don't quite realize how far we've come until we take that moment to sit and reflect. The ninth house can represent that some of you might be considering traveling, um, going on a big trip somewhere. Ninth house is usually about those big, longer trips. Sometimes it's maybe has uh, maybe you want to go somewhere and you want to like go and explore castles or architecture or history or something. Um, some of you may potentially meet somebody from a foreign land or meet somebody in your travels that you can end up partnering up with in some way. It can be a good new friend. It can possibly um, be a business partnership. Maybe it's just like a meeting of your spiritual minds. But of course, it can also be some love and romance there as well, since we are in the season of uh, relationships, right? Um, but you could also be really having a look at your beliefs. Because the ninth house does have to do with your spirituality and your religion. So you could be trying to find a balance, Libra, with your spiritual self and maybe some traditional religious upbringing that you have had. Can you meld these together? Because maybe, you know, it can be one of those things where, you know, not everything 
um, that you've learned maybe from your, your, um, religion or from your culture or from when you've grown up, not everything is out of alignment with who you are, but maybe there's some things that no longer click, no longer make sense. And that might be where your spiritual self is coming in. And so in this energy with the Libra and energy, you could be trying to find that balance, that harmonious sweet spot between the two. Right. Um, and yes, it can happen. Right. It certainly can happen 100 percent. So um, but some of you are very much because we do have this leaving this breaking away from our past. You may be leaving behind some uh, belief systems of yesteryear and embracing a different belief system or a more enlightened belief system, or a more accepting belief system as you move forward into your future. So it's very interesting energy coming in here. This is also um, a great energy for putting your big ideas into motion. Uh, great energy for uh, writing or publishing or learning, um, journaling, right? Anything to do with uh, your higher mind. Right. So maybe you're going to sign up for a class or maybe you're going to dive deep and stick your nose into some history books or something. Because, of course, Aquarius, even though you are a futuristic sign, you more than anyone knows how important it is to remember our history and remember our past. We've got the moon on the back of the deck for you before I put this thing down. OK, um, so very significant on that one. But uh, we'll get to that one in a second. But our future and our present day is based on our past experiences, right? Our past brought us to where we are today. We can choose to do things differently in our future because we've learned some lessons from our past. What happens if we erase our past? We forget the lessons. And our past is quite often uncomfortable. And we look at like kind of cancel culture and things like that. And humanity, humanity itself is, you know, we don't really know where we've come from. We're discovering new things every single day um, because history is forever being rewritten to suit someone's narrative, right? Or it's being canceled as we see today. Um, if history makes you uncomfortable, it's less likely to, you're less likely to repeat it. And that happens in our personal lives and also in our collective lives as well. So in the ninth house, you could be kind of going on a philosophical kind of bent. Um, you could be expanding your higher mind and you want to learn more about where we've come from because it helps you make better decisions for where we're going tomorrow. So it could be very enlightening for you in this, in this eclipse, right? Uh, so, you know, just be open to, um, kind of whatever information or whatever, um, you know, whatever strikes your fancy, follow that path. All right. It's going to take you down a rabbit hole of something interesting. I think we've got create energy here for you guys, right? So you might be feeling a little extra creative as well. Creative writing ninth house. Um, maybe you want to take a class, you want to learn a new hobby, right? There's very much a learning element um, with this uh, with this eclipse for you. Um, so it can be really quite fun, but creation is the basis of manifestation and some of you have something coming to fruition. Something you've been waiting for, something that you've been wishing for, something that you've been working towards, right, can certainly be coming to fruition for you guys um, in the near future. Um, and I feel like the next the next couple of months especially are going to be very transformative for you because, of course, Pluto retrograde right now, um, direct on October 11th, but in November, Pluto is going to go back in your sign all right. And this is a very significant transition, um, a very significant event for you that really does propel you forward into the future. You are the chosen ones for the future, right? Pluto in your sign, highly dramatic. And oh, there, there is the death card. So there is Pluto very much front and center in your reading. We've got the two of pentacles, the need to find balance and harmony. It's going to be very important for you to do that now. And we have the eight of pentacles, your attention to detail, your willingness to learn um, and expand and grow. It'll all pay off for you here. So the death card here, of course, ruled by Pluto. Just finished saying that Pluto is very significant for you right now. 
leading you forward to the future. So if you have given any of your power away, this is where you're going to start to take your power back. Um, if there's anything that needs to end, this is where you're going to need to make some very important decisions. The two of pentacles, right? Weighing up your options, trying to make a decision. Um, if you want to start something new, this is a great energy for you to do that. Or if there's any significant changes that you want to make or that need to be made in your life, now is the time. These are all very much highlighted for you. The key to navigating change New beginnings, endings, whatever it happens to be, growth, right? The key to that, two of pentacles, is being flexible and bendy, okay? Not resisting things. Um, the two of pentacles is an energy of um, being adaptable so that we can keep things in a balance, in alignment. It's also a focus on balance in your life as well, right? And what do we need to do to restore balance? Sometimes we need to create change. Sometimes we need to let things go. Sometimes we need to try something a little bit different. But some of you might be making some very important decisions at this time as well. Two of Pentacles can very much be about having options, but also about making those important decisions that affect our present and affect our future. But the Eight of Pentacles here is, I love the Eight of Pentacles because it is a productive energy. Um, and it's one where we see results of the work and the effort and the time and the attention that we've put into something. So you could be having something that is paying off for you right Right now, um, you could be you could have a little bit of luck on your side. I mean, the ninth house energy, it's ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is planet of expansion and growth. Um, it's one filled with good luck. Um, very lucky, very lucky um, energy that it carries with it. Right. And but it's one where we can break free and move forward into the future. Right. We can take that next step. Um we're amplifying some of the energy that's around. Now just keep in mind that Jupiter is going retrograde October 9th until February 4th. So between now and February 4th, right, um, birthday season for you, there could be a lot of things going on behind the scenes. And then there might be something that does come to fruition or just comes to light. There are some doors that open for you, perhaps. So you may enter a slightly slower period as we go through um, the next couple of months. Right. And then things really start to shift. February 2025 is going to be the start of some very interesting things going on, um, leading us up to the next eclipse season. Right. First, got to get through this one. But the eight of pentacles can show that you're ready to level up. You're ready to move forward. You're ready to, um, you know, expand your horizons in some way. And quite often when we do get the eight of pentacles. Right. This is where the student becomes the teacher. Right. The um, apprentice becomes the master um, where the employee becomes the boss. You know, all of these things. So we're we've learned a lot along the way. We've gained a lot of wisdom. We have a lot of experience. We have a lot of skill and we're ready to take the next step forward in something. So some very powerful doors of change and transformation are very much open for you guys, but there could be some hidden things. So just be aware of that because Pluto has been retrograde for a bit and out of your sign for a bit. Right. And so there's like a huge shift that is happening. And so just go with the flow and that energy. It's a very important time for you. Um, let's get, uh, let's get a final message out here for you guys and see what else. Woo. Thank you very much. And we're going to get Three. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. We got three cards. You are the only one so far to get three. Um, so let's see what we've got. We've got card number 23. I am adventurous. Um, twos, balance, harmony, decisions, right? Um, threes are creative energy, also teamwork and collaboration. You put the two together and we've got a five, change, transformation. You have a zest for life and you are eager to experience anything and everything possible. You love change and excitement and need to feel both or need both to feel truly alive. For you, life is an adventure to be lived to the fullest. I am adventurous. And even though Aquarius, you are a fixed air sign, right? And fixed, uh, fixed, uh, signs don't typically, um, love change, right? Um, but I feel like here that you like the changes that you create or that you need to create or that need to be created because they feel fulfill a purpose and they're not just frivolous change for 
wasting everyone's time kind of thing, right? So um, you are adventurous and you are part of the future. So it's a very interesting message there for you. Number 13, there's that death card energy again, okay? So pay attention to that. Um, 13, though, you are a conscientious worker with a knack for coming up with creative ideas and turning them into something real. Oh, huh? eight of pentacles, right? Um, an optimistic but practical outlook keeps you determined and on track as you work steadily towards your goals. I am confident. So number 13 and 13. Okay. And we have card number 25 as well here. I am intelligent. You have a great ability to take in and process information on both conscious and subconscious levels. And that's that moon energy at the back of the deck. Your subconscious, your spiritual self, um, something coming to light that has been in shadow, that has been hidden, okay? Your curiosity is endless and your desire to dive deep into a variety of subjects will bring you an immense awareness of the world. I am intelligent. Hello, ninth house energy. I'm going to leave all that there for you, Aquarius. I hope there was something here for you. Good luck in this eclipse and, of course, and beyond with everything that's yet to come. I uh, hope there was something here for you. If so, please like, share, subscribe. I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.